this week on Starting Line. And we want to get the farmers and the farm families um, to be able to talk to the people that they need to. Representative Jean Poppy talks to us about the lack of options for those seeking mental health care in Greater Minnesota. And we learn more about her proposal that aims to be part of the solution on this week's Starting Line. We hear a lot about access to health care nowadays. It seems like the lines at the clinic are longer. Some people don't have access at all. It's a problem that's coming to a head in greater Minnesota. Some farm families and businesses are struggling with stress or financial problems. And the lack of health care options is leading to a mental health care crisis. Representative Jean Poppy is sponsoring a proposal that she hopes will help rural Minnesotans find the help they need. The DFLer from Austin spoke to us about her bill and the issue that's facing some residents in greater Minnesota. There's a stigma around um, saying that you need help and saying that you aren't able to, you know, the, the books aren't going to balance this month or they haven't balanced the last six months or all of a sudden they, you know, they owe some money to their seed company and they're not able to pay it. And, you know, they've, they've gone to their lender and the lender has said, you know what, we have to really look at your balance sheet and it's not working out. So there are a number of things that can happen. And, you know, if you're thinking just about the financial piece, you know, you can have a frustration about how your finances aren't managing. But if you then have um, that happening over the course of time and you maybe don't know who to go to and you feel like you can't solve the problem, you're never going to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's when something happens. And, and there is, I think, farmers especially, they don't necessarily talk to their neighbors or friends. Um, spouses sometimes don't even know the depths of what somebody is facing. And that was really the testimony we had was a, a woman who farmed with her husband and they were going through tough times. They, she knew it, he knew it. Um, and really, you know, his way out was to commit suicide. And it's, it was a tremendously um, sad, experience for her obviously to go through but for all of us to hear that it's because you you can't do anything about it once it happens so we have to try to do things about it before we get to that point and there are other families that are in that situation and certainly in the 80s we had um, farmers that committed suicide we are seeing that again so some farmers um, are able to kind of be resilient and continue on or they reach out and they get that additional support but the ones that aren't reaching out and getting the support, we want to make sure that they understand we have resources for them to be able to, to use. What would House File 232 do for these folks? House File 232, actually, you know, um, in the 1980s, in the mid 80s, we had a farm crisis. And people of certain ages can remember that that was a really difficult time for farmers. And when we had the farm crisis, that's really when farm aid started. And for some people, you know, to know Willie Nelson created farm aid. And then they put money into uh, different projects and different um, um, entities within Minnesota, actually. So some things that started out of that was farmer lender mediation, the concept that we needed to be able to have somebody to help farmers go to their lenders and to know what they could do and what their rights are and kind of help them resolve problems without just being, this is, this is what we're gonna do and you're gonna have to take it. So I think there was a lot of that, the mediation. Farm advocates, we in Minnesota have farm advocates. Right now we have 10 farm advocates that are located across the state. And they are people that are well-versed in farmer lender kinds of issues. They certainly understand transition. So somebody who might be wanting to retire from farming. They might be talking about health care or mental health care. So they can help to just listen to what a farmer's concerns are and be able to then um, get them to the right resources. All of those things started in the mid 80s. Uh, FLAG, which is a farmer legal action group, that started in the mid 80s because farmers just, if you don't have resources, you don't know who you can go to, but you might need some legal advice. So that started and that really Willie Nelson Farm Aid, that was one of the things that he actually was part of the outcome of that. So um, many of these things have been around for a number of years, but they really are seeing a resurgence just because of the need and because 
you know, dairy farms, you, you read or hear about dairy farms are selling, uh, those farmers are selling their herds every, every day. We hear of another dairy farm that just, they just can't make it. There's been, um, you know, five years uh, going on of, of low prices. So if a farmer is used to weathering a storm, quite literally, they have the ups and downs of being um, in a situation that some years are better than others, but they expect that, they expect it to be a cycle that kind of writes itself, and this has been five years where it hasn't been able to come back up. So just the high cost of things like that, high cost of health insurance, people are, um, are burdened by that as well, and if they're having something happen, you know, it can be anything that can happen in their family, that can cause uh, people to have extra stress and extra anxiety about uh, the work that they do. So one of the problems with addressing this issue is that there aren't many options for healthcare in greater Minnesota. How do we fix that? Well, that's a good question. You know, we do have, um, we even have public health though in every county of the state. So if somebody um, doesn't have a mental health provider or they don't have a psychologist or they don't have um, a hospital right in their neighboring um, area, they could talk to somebody in public health. They can, you know, they can reach out like that. Ministers are people who are trained to work with people. We have community colleges. I, I work as a counselor at the community college in, in Austin, and we have people who are, are skilled to do that. The farm business management instructors, they can help to reach out. That's where farm advocates and other people are, are there to help provide that resource and referral and they might not always be the, the person that's the end person to talk to, but they can be the beginning person to talk to. And we wanna get the farmers and the farm families um, to be able to talk to the people that they need to. So we, you know, we're really trying to encourage people to just make a phone call, can be to the hotline, could be to a farm advocate, could be to visit with their minister, to talk to their lender, it could be um, in any route that they go. And then we want those people that are available and, and have heard that, that first cry for help or that first conversation to then know who they should go to as well. With the bill having many co-sponsors from both sides of the aisle, mm -hmm. I think this might be one of the more bipartisan issues in the House. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I think rural mental health has been an issue that we've talked about over the last couple of years. And it really is just hitting home now because of, again, trade uh, concerns, the tariffs, um, the weather, the commodity prices, um, all of those things are adding up. And we've heard the, the stories now, and we've got a little bit more people have um, paid attention, maybe a little bit more to what is going on. So it is definitely a bipartisan issue. We have multiple bills that people have introduced. We will be working on a, a, a single bill that will go forward that will help to add farm advocates so we have more people who are going to be able to be a resource. We'll hopefully had, add a second, at least a second person to be able to help Ted Matthews when it comes to being that first call or 15th call for help, you know, as again, as they make their way through. Um, we we want to make sure that we triage to the point where we don't have a situation where somebody, you know, is sitting with their rifle in their barnyard and decide to do something that um, we don't want them to do. Um, it, there's help, there's hope, we can solve things, and people just need to know that we're, we're trying to resolve um, and provide some, provide some resources for them. As of this interview, seven Republicans have signed on to House File 232. The bill was held over last month by the House Agriculture and Food Finance and Policy Division. For more information on this bill or any bill that's introduced in the legislature, visit the House website, www.house.mn. Thanks for watching The Starting Line. We'll see you next time.